The Anchor Solix F3800 is an industry-leading portable power station. If you combine that with the all-new home power panel, you can unlock even more features to get the most out of your F3800. Those features include the ability to automatically supply backup power to your home in the event of an outage, and to take advantage of time of use metering so you can start saving money with your F3800 today. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the installation process of how to add the home power panel to your existing residence so that you can unlock those features today. The first step in installing the F3800 and home power panel system is making sure that you know what your electrical loads and energy requirements will be to make sure that your system will give you the power you need. Each F3800 comes with 3.8 kilowatt hours of battery storage and the ability to output 6,000 watts of AC power continuously. Now, if you live in a larger home, it's worth considering upgrading and adding a second F3800. The home power panel is compatible with up to two of them and that combines their maximum output to give you 12,000 watts of continuous AC output surging to 18,000 and takes you from 3.8 kilowatt hours of battery bank storage to 7.6 kilowatt hours. If you want to run a 1,000 watt load for one hour, that is 1,000 watt hours or one kilowatt hour. It's important to note too that the more expansion batteries you have will not only give you more runtime in the event of a power outage, it will also make sure that during time of use metering, you're able to run off of the cheaper power that you've stored earlier in the day longer into the peak usage time period. Now that we know that, we can get on with our installation. Installing the home power panel alone will give you the ability to take advantage of the money savings of time of use metering right now. However, if you want to be able to power backup loads during the event of an outage, there are two ways we can go about this. The first is by installing a separate 100 amp sub panel that we will connect only the loads we want to be powered in the event of an outage. The power goes out, the F3800 begins powering that sub panel while everything else will be shut off until power is restored. The second option is to take a look at the input rating on a pre-existing sub panel in your home. In my case, this panel powers my entire house, but because it's just a 100 amp panel, I don't need to install a separate sub panel for my backup loads because the Anchor Solix F3800 and home power panel will be able to supply that full amount of power to this pre-existing panel. Let's take a look at what's included with the home power panel. We've got the panel itself, the interconnect cable, and then we have an assortment of current transformers for monitoring not only how much power you're pulling in from the grid, but also how much you're generating with your solar panels. Mounting brackets, hardware for attaching it to either a wooden or drywall or concrete wall, a mounting template, and installation instructions. The next thing that you'll want to also consider is that we want to have the F3800 also within cable's reach of connecting to the inputs, which are located on the bottom of our home power panel. The last thing we need to keep in mind is that we will need to protect all the wiring going to and from the home power panel using conduit. We begin the installation process for the home power panel by determining its mounting location on the wall. We want to make sure that we're giving us at least five inches of clearance around all sides of the unit so that we can make our connections easily. We also want to make sure that we're leaving 36 inches or three feet of room in front of the panel, again, so that we can maintain easy access when we need it. In order to make the routing of the conduit as easy as possible, I went ahead and did a mock-up of the pieces I'll be using so I can put my home power panel in a position that's not gonna require a lot of custom conduit shaping or cutting. And now that I've got the position marked out, I'm gonna use my template to drill the four holes for installing the mounting brackets. Once that's done, we can make these connections and start running our wire. We'll just use the included screws to mount the brackets to the back of the home power panel. Now that we have our bracket mounted, we can go ahead and hang the home power panel. Now that we have the home power panel mounted and the conduit ran, we can go ahead and start wiring it up. We will begin by going outside and disconnecting the wires that feed from the home's main panel, which is outdoors, into this one. We will now run new wires from that main panel into this box and come out and go into the grid input on the home power panel. That's gonna supply this with the power it needs from the grid. Then we will run from the backup output of the home power panel into our breaker panel here that was once powered directly from the grid. That's gonna supply the power to all of these circuits in the event 
of a blackout. Before we get started working on the panel inside the house, we're gonna to wanna to kill power to it, and we'll go ahead and kill power to everything by turning off the main breaker that feeds the mains into the house. I'm gonna remove this so that we can go ahead and disconnect the wires that are feeding that panel and put in our new ones. Now behind this access panel is where we have the wires that actually go into the indoor panel feeding through right here. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the wires inside and pull them through and start running our new ones. Before we start to run our thick gauge wire through this pass through and into the house, it's a good time to go ahead and run these small wires that are connected to our current transformers. And remember there are three of these. One will connect to each of the lines going in and then the last one will connect to the input from our PV solar array. So the power feeding into this main panel comes from the meter right here. And there is this protective cover and we're gonna peel it back so that we can clip our current transformers measuring the grid input power onto them. This is something you wanna be very careful about because even though all these breakers are off, there still is electricity and power coming to this side of that main breaker. And we wanna pay attention that this arrow here that says source and is pointing upward, is pointing up toward the meter or the source of the power. The last current transformer we're going to install attaches to the PV input breaker, which is right here. It does doesn't matter which of the two wires you connect it to, and you want to make sure that the arrow is pointing toward your panel, the direction that the current is flowing. It's time to install the current transformers on the main L1 and L2 inputs coming in from the grid. Now when you install these, it's important to pay attention to the source arrow. For us, we want to make sure that that arrow is pointing the direction that power is going. So this arrow will be pointing down because the power is coming from the grid through the meter and into our panel. Now that we have the wires for our current transformers run and the transformers installed, we can go ahead and run our main power supply lines coming in from the grid into the home power panel. The first line that we're starting with is the neutral line and that's indicated with a bit of white tape. We've got the wire stripped back and we can go ahead and run it up and make the connection onto our main neutral bar. So for the last of my lines coming in, I'm just going to go ahead and tape this with red tape for my L2 connection, just like we did on the current transformers. All right, and the last wire that we have to run in is the ground wire. And that's just like the others. It's going to connect to the main ground bar up here and go in and connect to the home power panel. So that's gonna wrap up all the connections we have to make out here. We can go ahead and reinstall this panel and we'll go inside and finish making our connections in there. So now that we've got our wires ran from the main panel outside into this box through our conduit and appearing here next to the grid input side of the home power panel, we can repeat that process with the wires that are gonna take the power from our home power panel on the backup side run it through that conduit and we'll connect it to the line, neutral and ground terminals on our backup panel. So we've finished up making all of our connections to both the main panel, our sub panel and the home power panel. And the last bit that we're gonna do is remember those current transformers from earlier. We're gonna go ahead and connect these to the CT ports for L1, L2 and then the solar. We do that, we'll put the covers back on and then we're ready to power everything back on and commission the system. Now that we've made all of the main electrical connections between our backup panel, our main panel, and the home power panel, it's time to make the final connection between it and our F3800 and commission it. We'll start by flipping up the communications antenna so they can get Wi-Fi, and we will use the supplied plug to connect to the power station one port. Go until you hear it click just like that, and we'll do the same on our F3800. Great. Now we can Flip both breakers to the on position and hold the on off button for two seconds. And there we have it. And now the house is back up and running. Everything on this panel is powered. And now it's time to scan the QR code in the manual to download the Anchor app and learn how to set up and configure the system and control it so it works for you. With the units installed and the wiring completed, that's gonna wrap up our installation of the Anchor Solux Home Power Panel in F3800. If you'd like to stay up to date with news and information, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel so that we can keep you living in power.